I was just so, so nervous with excitement, nervous with, I don't want to fail. I don't want to let people down. Um, but just, just proud that I was able to accomplish one of my goals, you know, to be a part of uh, the NBA. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar had six NBA MVPs, six championships, yet he'll still often sign sports memorabilia with the number 38,387. Among all your accomplishments, where will the scoring title rank? I don't know. I don't know because I, I have not set out to do that. It wasn't like a goal of mine when I entered the league. Um, make an all-star team, um, being rookie of the year, um, being first team all NBA, first team on defense, um, winning a championship for sure, being an MB MVP of the league. For but, both of those? Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, but the scoring record was never, ever even thought of in my head because I've always been a pass first guy. I've always loved the excitement of my seeing the success of my teammates of playing the game and that's just the way I was brought up. So to to know where it will rank as I stay here today, like you said, less than five hundred points away. I don't I don't even know how I'm gonna feel and I guess until that moment, but it's never been a, a goal of mine. You yourself have said you're not a scorer, but doesn't this have to tear a hole in that argument if you get the record or when you get the record? I think in the sense of um I mean, I know how to put the ball in the, in the hole, that's for sure. Um, and when I say I'm not a scorer, I, I, I say it in the sense of it's, it's never been um, the part of my game that defined me. Um, you know, I've always wanted to be a triple threat, to be able to rebound, assist, and be able to score as well, to just keep the defense at bay, but also wanted to be able to defend at a high level, communicate at a high level, try to be a great, great teammate, you know, night in and night out. Um, but there's an argument to it, uh, you know, when you when you look at, um, you know, how long this record has has stood, um, and, and the great cream of being able to accomplish something like that. So, but it won't be for me to discuss because um, I've never felt that way. So Kareem obviously had the signature skybook. Uh, <laughs> when fans picture LeBron James as an offensive threat and they close their eyes, what should they be picturing? Um, wow. Um, I don't know, because it's not like I have a, a signature one-leg Dirk fadeaway or, or a, a Pat and Michael Jordan fadeaway or a Kareem Sky hook, um, you know, or, or a dream shake. Um, I've been able to, you know, do things that just is not a, a signature. I think the only signature thing that I, people always talk about is like my signature tomahawk dunk in transition. People always kind of uh, talk about, you know, that's a signature. Even my, my, one of my teammates now today, uh, Lonnie Walker, always talk about the, the LeBron signature Tomahawk dunk, and um, that's been pretty cool. And that came out of nowhere, too. I happened to, my, my brother Brandon Williams, who's now, uh, you know, in the front with office the of the Cavs, he got a steal versus Oak Hill my senior year and threw it to me. And on national television, I was just, I was just living in the moment and did that dunk, and this became a signature of mine. The Akron Hammer, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so getting back to Kareem, you guys have so many links from mythical high school careers yeah. to social justice, consciousness, time with the Lakers, and yeah. now the scoring record. Where's your guys' relationship stand these days? Um, I think in a sense of just the correlation of, like you saying, being high school phenoms to you know doing the things that we did off the floor, you know, for the betterment of our people to wearing a Lakers jersey and trying to carry on that legacy that Dr. Buss and so many great people have set out for it. And then, um, you know, being a part of this conversation with the scoring record. That's, that's, the, that's the relationship, that's the conversation that we will kind of always be linked. When you break the record, knock on wood somewhere, right. who will be meaningful for you to see in the arena that night? Uh, my family. Um, and I know it's going to be uh, challenging whenever that, that, that moment happens. Um, you know, because of my kids' schedule, because they're, you know, the boys are playing basketball and they have their schedule, but they may have to miss a game or, or a game or two um, because I, they were there when the whole journey began. And, um, well, some of them, they were there, <laughs> you know, later on when the journey, but they've always been a part of what it meant for me to be able to accomplish what I want to accomplish, and that's my family, that's my kids, my wife, 
my mother um, and a lot of my uh, family and, and, and friends. Throughout your career, you've played with some peers that have been considered better quote-unquote scores. Right. <laughs> Kobe, T-Mac, you know, KD, Melo maybe, but none of them can touch your longevity. How is it meaningful for you to be approaching this record while you're still playing above the rim, while you're still flying up and down the court, while you're still dominating games, to be this version of you when the record approaches, what does that mean to you? It means a lot in the sense of me always preparing my body, always preparing my mind to be at my best. And um, to be able to go out and still be a, a focal point of my opponent's scouting reports um, lets me know I'm still playing at a high level and I want to continue to play at a high level. I want to continue to play at a championship level and still be respected every time I touch the floor as a threat throughout the whatever minutes I'm playing. If it's, you know, 25 minutes, if it's 35 minutes, if it's 45 minutes, you know, every time I'm on the court, I'm, I'm, I'm always viewed as a threat. Um, you know, that, that, that means a lot to me in the sense of how I just prepare myself um, to go out and play. You've been a threat for two decades now. Uh, I want to do a quick hitter, just thinking back to some of your most memorable regular season buckets. When I say your time as a Cavalier, yeah. what stands out? Uh, my most memorable bucket uh, will probably be um, probably game two of the Orlando Magic Series. Um, we were up big in that game, and they came back once again and took the lead. And, you know, at the end, uh, I remember uh, the late great, uh, Craig Sager sitting on the uh, right there, like in the corner, ready to interview the Orlando Magic's uh, either been Hedo because uh, he had hit a big shot on Rashard uh -huh. Lewis or even Dwight, and uh, get the inbound pass and, and, and was able to knock it down at the buzzer to tie the series. That's one of my most memorable shots. So yeah, you have incredible postseason shots. We know all the game winners <laughs> and stuff, but like regular season, I think about the outlet from Kevin Love oh, in yeah. Washington. In Washington, that was, that was incredible as well, yeah, for sure. In Miami, right? So what do you think about in Miami? Is it, is it the lob from Dwayne Wade? Yeah, it's, it's probably the lob, uh, I mean, the lobs <laughs> uh, from D. Wade, but also, um, you know, the when I, when the silencer hit, hit nation, hit the nation in the world, uh, the, the shot before All-Star Weekend in Golden State. Um, that was a, a very memorable shot, and also uh, Game Seven um, to be able to kind of seal the game against uh, San Antonio on the right elbow uh, versus uh, that great Spurs team. And and now with the Lakers, you know, what, what are some of the shots that come to mind? I think about a historic shot in in a way playing in, in the Orlando bubble uh, yeah. against the Clippers, getting the game winner. Yeah, you know, the NBA bringing sports back to yeah. society. What I mean, are the things that stand out? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I've hit so many memorable shots here as a, as a Laker, but that's one of them, Dave, you saying it just, you know, we, the world was going through so much and uh, sport in general has always been a, an escape. It's always been a, a place for joy and comfort and laughs and, you know, you'd be down some days and then your team play again and you're up the next day. So for us to be able to bring the game back to the bubble and, um, yeah, hitting the game winner versus the Clippers, uh, that was big time. Also, you know, hitting those big time shots versus Denver and in the Western Conference Finals to be able to seal that series um, in that fourth quarter. That was, that was um, a very a memorable moment uh, for myself. How do you think you've evolved as a scorer? Uh, how I've, I've evolved? I think uh, the best teacher in life is experience. And I think over the course of my career, I've just gotten better with every facet of my game. There were times where I didn't really have a low post game. I wasn't a low post threat. There was times where I wasn't a a threat from the mid range. There was times where I wasn't a threat from the outside. Um, there were times where you could literally just try to bait me into doing things that I wasn't great at. Um, I've evolved into where um, I, I do what I want to do um, on the floor, you know, and uh, I take the shot that I want to take. Um, I'm able to use my ability to read coverages because I've seen them all um, for the betterment of not only myself, but for more importantly, for my teammates to succeed. Um, so I've learned a lot over the years. Some of these things come down to timing, right? And you've had so many great things uh, occur with the context of winning in your career. But some of these things, you scored your 30,000th point in a loss against San Antonio. You passed Kobe in a loss in Philadelphia. You passed Michael in a loss against Denver. Denver. Mm -hmm. Passed Carmelo in a loss against Washington. And, and this record is approaching while your team is below 500. Right. How is that sitting with you? I, I want to win. <laughs> it's not sitting well with me. I don't, I don't like having accomplishments, and they don't feel right uh, when it comes to losing effort. 
Um, and it don't matter if it's a regular season game or not. Um, I've been trained and born and uh, to win. That is that's how um, I started my basketball journey um, as a little leaguer um, playing the game and we were trained to win and, and, and play the right way. Play for your teammates and play the right way, but we want to win. And so, you know, as we sit here right now as a, as a, as a franchise and a team that's below 500, you know, we've been playing some good basketball as of late, but we want to, and I want to, win at the highest level. You know, and, um, you know, breaking records and, and setting, you know, records or passing greats and losing effort has never been a DNA of mine. Um, I think back to like last year when I was having a conversation with Mav and Rich and uh, PR and Randy, and it was towards the end of the season, and I had an opportunity to lead the league in scoring. And I was like, yeah, but we're not going to make the playoffs no matter what. And me being out on the floor trying to go for a scoring record in games that don't matter, it, it felt so corny to me. So... Um, I was like, I'm not even gonna, I'm not even gonna finish. I'm not gonna be able to qualify because I'm not gonna play any of these games. So, you know, that has never mattered to me unless it was about winning. So, the next closest active player on the all-time scoring list is Kevin Durant, and he's no spring chicken either. He's 34 years old. <laughs> Are there any players out there that you've seen that you feel like could have the right mix of talent, skill, drive, determination, luck to be able to someday pass this record for you? I mean, KD comes up the first thing that comes to mind for sure. Um, he, his, his name is not Easy Money and, 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 and Slim Reaper for, for no reason. Um, he, he does it so effortlessly. His ability to shoot the three ball, shoot the mid range, get to the paint, but also shoot 85, 90 from the free throw line. Um, those are key ingredients, and, but the most important is about being available on the floor. Um, we have a lot of great scorers in our league, you know, with KD being one of them, Kyrie, Luka, he's young, Embiid, Giannis, those guys, they, they put numbers on the board. But you have to have a little luck as well, you know, and uh, you know, we, we all know that health is uh, the most important, not only in life, uh, well, not only in sports, but in life in general. You have to have uh, some real good luck to be able to be on the floor and, and still be able to do it. And once you have the scoring title to your name, what's left for you? What do you need to do in your career before you can hang it up? I need to be on the floor with my boy. Um, I got to be on the floor with Bronny. You know, either on the same uniform or, uh, you know, a matchup uh, uh, against him. And I don't mean like, because he's a, he's a point guard. I'm a... At this point, and now I'm playing center, or, <laughs> yeah. or whatever the, the, the team needs for me. Uh, positionless, yeah, basketball. positionless Come basketball. On. Coach Paul always said <laughs> positionless basketball, which I love. Um, but I, I would love to um, do the whole uh, King Griffey Senior Junior thing. That's, that's that's that would be ideal for sure. Being being with him, spending a full year with him in the same uniform, um, that would be that would be the icing on the cake. And just well, what do you tell him about the potential of, of that opportunity? How do you guys discuss that? We don't. We don't discuss. We don't discuss. Um, but he hears. He sees it. He, he hears what I say. Um, he has aspirations. I ask him, "What is his aspirations?" And he says he wants to play in the NBA. So, you know, if he wants to do it, he got to put in the work. And that's, I'm here already. So, I'm just waiting on. Him. He'll have about 40,000 points to catch up to get to dad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he got a long way to get to me. <laughs>